Let us teach the New Testament. First Epistle of John, Lesson 9, 1 John 4, verses 1 through 6. In this ninth of fifteen lessons on the New Testament book of 1 John, we shall deal with these ten topics. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the Spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Although the text of 1 John has been well preserved across two millennia, we may note a few variants found in manuscripts of 1 John 4, 1 through 6. In verse 2 from the 4th century, a few manuscripts read, We know the Spirit of God, instead of You know the Spirit of God. One 4th century manuscript reads, To have come, instead of Has come. A 5th century and a 4th century manuscripts omit the clause, Whoever is not from God does not listen to us, because a copyist's eye went from the first us to the second us, a common kind of scribble error. In both the Gospel of John and in this epistle, it is clear that John borrowed heavily from the language of Jesus himself. In 1 John 4, 1 through 6, John presents the second of five great advantages of Christian faith. False prophets include men or women who falsely claim to be a prophet of God or who prophesy falsely. Recalling that a prophet is anyone inspired to proclaim or to reveal divine will or purpose. To listen often means to receive news or information about something, to learn about something. The spirit behind false teaching is an activating spirit that is not from God. Because there are persons activated by such spirits, it is necessary to test the various kinds of spirits. To test is to make a critical examination of something, to determine genuineness, to put it to the test, or to examine the spirits of bogus prophets. In their New Testament writings, both John and Paul employ one noun or pronoun to define another noun or pronoun, when both nouns are objects of the same verb of confession. The subject of a verb in Greek takes the nominative case, whereas the object and its complement take the accusative case, forming a double accusative. 
Thus, in 1 John 4, 2, it would be accurate to translate, Every spirit that confesses Jesus to be Christ come in the flesh is from God. Or, as elsewhere, Every spirit that confesses that Jesus is the Christ come in the flesh is from God. This verse complements 1 John 2, 22, Jesus is the Christ, and 1 John 5, 1, who believes that Jesus is the Christ. In 1 John 4, 3, Jesus takes a definite article which points to Jesus in verse 2, meaning to confess this Jesus, that is, the Jesus who is Christ come in the flesh. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you teachable points from the passage. For example, seven points on true Christians. And seven points on false Christians. Contrast the Holy Trinity with an evil trinity. Perhaps talk about lying spirits who are in the world today, what they say about Jesus. If need be, explain the historical Christian doctrine of Jesus the Messiah, the Christ. In ancient times, holy men of God used to anoint new kings by pouring oil upon their head. In the Hebrew language, the word for anointed is Messiah or Mashiach, and in the Greek language, the word for anointed is Christ, Christos. Thus Jews called their kings the Lord's Messiah. For hundreds of years, Jewish believers often talked about a great future king whom they called the Messiah. When Jesus came into the world, he let everyone know that he is the Messiah, that is, the Christ. In the years when John wrote 1 John, philosophers began to teach that the Christ was a spirit whom the God sent to dwell with the man Jesus, and that Jesus was not the Christ. So 1 John teaches that Jesus is the Christ, and that the Christ came into the world in the flesh, that is, as the man Jesus. After someone or several have read or recited 1 John 4, 1 through 6, in small gatherings of learners, pose queries such as these. What have you learned from this passage about God? About Jesus? About false teachers? Whilst preaching, teaching, or leading, recommend ways in which to apply the passage putting it into practice. For example, instruct parents to explain to their children this week your church's teaching about Jesus. Have learners tell false teachings that they have heard recently about Jesus. Affirm other Christian denominations that have right teaching about Jesus. Invite learners to collect from their own homes any books, pamphlets, tapes, discs, and objects that have false teaching in them about Jesus, then bring these together and burn them with fire. Read five times 1 John 4, 7 through 13 before you view the next video lesson. If you leave comments or queries, or you write to me at the download site, I shall try to reply to you by email or in a video.